So number three is another principle we use just to increase this luck. So you, you, you make your game, uh, you, know, you know, having less players, you, you're high, you have a higher likelihood to be successful, or at least appear to be successful. Now, the reason why I say this is, is really a principle that, that we follow in, in creating our business. Now, in advertising, because yes, in case um, it wasn't extremely honest at the beginning, there is a large chunk of advertising elements to our business. So revenue comes in from the advertising agencies and the brands. Um, and so we rev share that with the developers that have integrated us. Now, ad tech is a boring thing sometimes, right? And it's not really exciting and it's very commoditized. Especially in the States, every single person is doing a DSP, DM, PSSP bullshit thing. There's all these acronyms that people use. There's no real innovation. So we were like, okay, how about we try to do something that just almost calls itself differently, use semantics first, and see if it flows through to the business. So we first described ourselves, it was a rewards network, it was moments of achievement, it was in this serendipity, right? And it was really defining a, a different category just, just by helping people realize that we're not just calling it ads. Because we also realize the general perception, the word ad always indicates something negative, really. It's usually detracting from your user experience. It's never really something that's positive, right? So just that notion, we realized we had to call it something different. But I used an example, actually, I remember this very distinctly. I have an image in the background here of, uh, if you can see, of a, what, what is a sport of tandem surfing. You've never heard of it, it is what you think it is. It is a dude twirling girl around the air while he's surfing. Um, it's pretty, pretty badass. Now, I met a couple in Hawaii about a year ago. Um, the names were, uh, his name was Bear, her name was Talon. Okay, you make this shit up, right? And I was like, wow. And they're like, we are the world champions in tandem surfing. I'm like, wow, that's fucking impressive, right? Um, but there's like 30 people that play this sport, right? So the, well, the real, the, what I realized was, Jesus, they're, that's badass, world champions, define the rules of the sport, everything. But the game just has less players. And, and it was just very interesting that, that he could take something that, you know, people still surf, right? I mean, this is something that we'll do, but taking that unique niche and almost creating a world around it, this vernacular, this universe is very important, especially when so much is commoditized these days, right? Anybody who's got a laptop and an internet connection can really create a lot of crazy cool shit, right? And all the tools that are available out there, all the, all the code and the, the open source and, and the like, you basically there's not a lot of differentiation with basic building blocks, right? But it really is about execution, and it's about how you frame it and how you brand yourself. That for us was very key. It was more about the why, what we were doing, versus the what. And number, the f number four is serendipitous moments. Now, serendipity is, you know, some cases could be linked to luck in some way to define the word. But in our case, I really wanted to bring serendipity into the way that rewards were experienced. Um, and I'll describe it in a certain way. Uh, if you're expecting a reward, right, it usually has very little meaning because you're expecting it. It's like this, this expected thing. You've got an anchor value towards it. It's like, it's like, a, like a loved one. You expect them to be doing something every day. It's not a gift. If it's unexpected and your husband shows up uh, one day with a bouquet of flowers, that's a, that's a serendipitous thing. That's a happy thing. That's a surprise and delight, right? So I was reading at the time when I was starting the company a book called Predictably Irrational. And it inspired me that these rewards should be serendipitous. That we should not tell people how to get it, but let them do what they were doing, because we don't want to turn everybody into Pavlovian dogs. We want them to preserve their own intrinsic motivation for wanting to actually use these apps and use these, play these games in the first place. But I have a picture in the background, actually, more interestingly, of Google Glass. You guys may have seen or heard of it, um, or even have ordered one. Those of you who are lucky enough to have Right, so all this restaurant around me is, you know, rated whatever, Zagat or whatever, this is awesome, and I'm going to go there now because I now know this. The information, the empowerment, adds to that serendipity. Highlights the same thing as an app as well that some of you may have seen or used. Uh, I don't know if it's blocked in China, but basically, uh, you know, you can see people around you, what they're interested in. Now, you know, I'm in a bar, and the girl, I don't know what she's interested in, I'm just going to go to talk to her, but I don't know about other people, they want to use this app highlight. But it is like serendipity, it's adding that experience. Now, perhaps an app that you guys are very familiar with, WeChat, or uh, what's the Chinese way to say it? Wei shit, wei sh, wei sh, wei sh, wei sh, okay, all right, that's why I don't speak Mandarin. Uh, all right, um, but the cool part, you guys have seen the shake feature, right? 
And that's serendipity, right? You're shaking your, your, your phone and you're connecting you know, with someone who happens to be shaking it at the exact same second. Now every time I do it, I get you know, hooked up with like really creepy people, but uh, whatever. You know, it's a group of people concept. But, all right, 10 seconds, you can get a break there. All right, banjo is another interesting one about serendipity. So you can, I just want to bring, you, bring your attention to that statement there. Banjo brings you the moments you would otherwise miss. Otherwise miss. FOMO, right? Fear of missing out, right? They're basically making that a product, right? Fear of missing out. You now know that people will next, you know, next door are having way more fun than you are, right? Um, but that's the type of thing. It's really interesting. The serendipity now is having that sixth sense is very key. And, and key, you know, what, what it was was tapping into, you know, knowing that these moments were happening and being conscious of them, letting brands actually augment that that feeling of, of happiness was actually very exciting. And something that was completely unexpected. That type of delight cannot be bought. You cannot buy that delight. Unless you buy with us. Yes. Um, for five minutes, it's all about relative luck. So I show this picture of the uh, stretch limo in hilly San Francisco, and you know, it's like you know, first world problems, right? Like, a, like a, you know, you can't get your huge stretch limo over the hill. Too bad, man. You know, get a normal car. Um, but you know, I just realized as a company, though, just personally, one of the things that we really did a lot was sort of celebrate our wins, and that's something that you know, me being the dude who isn't the Shanghai entrepreneur on these banner things. I think one of the things that I noticed, and I, I, I want to start, you know, sort of sharing more, is this, this, this weird and, and sort of uncanny ability for every American entrepreneur to be like, yeah, man, I'm on this list. Yeah, we're like top ten of this whatever random thing. And all the lists that were in my bio, yeah, that shit could have been made up. You never know, right? But the whole idea is there's a lot of celebrations and milestones along the way. And I keep, again, in the company, the, the product is about acknowledging these everyday victories, right? And then personally, the funny thing was it was about help, helping our team realize that, you know, one after another, you're building this company. It doesn't happen overnight. And I remember that a lot of the ideas that I've added to our company over the last two years uh, have not been mine. Uh, they've all been sort of people just having these inspiration moments, you know, whether it be expanding beyond games to, hey Brian, why don't we not just do physical things and just lattes and bottles of water? Why don't you do virtual things as well? It's like, oh, that's a great idea. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things I realize that just your ability to ratchet up your innovation is a sum of sort of the, the, the folks that are around you that are acknowledging of the opportunity and believe truly in that, that vision. Number six is uh, lucky brands. So one of the things that I do not regret at all and I'm very excited about is actually one of the things that I think makes us unique. You'll never hear someone go, oh my god, I love AdBob, I love Graystripe and Millennial Media, and in case you're not familiar with those brands, those are ad networks in the mobile space in, in the US. Um, and the reason why is because if you actually knew who was doing that annoying ad, you would know who to punch in the face, right? But what we wanted to do is how do we now, if this is a positive thing, if we're actually augmenting this happiness, why not brand it, right? Why not help people realize it's a key reward, right? So this is the first billboard we took out actually last week in San Francisco. Um, by the way, we did it just for shits and giggles. Um, and then we had a reporter reach out and go, oh, what's so this ironic that you're a new advertising format, you buy out of home. And I'm like, no, oh, okay. I just did it for fun. But the idea is you want to increase the likelihood that people identify your brand and actually want to contribute and help it. And this is the platform play. You've seen this with a lot of social networks and products that are APIs. So these are things you can plug into. So this is, again, a trend that's very much so, not trends, it's literally business and, and how billions of dollars in economic activity is created. But really the ability for people to build your business for you but in a way that they also add, you know, gain a lot of value as well. So the funny thing is we realize that with this, you know, usually, would you ever tell an advertising company like, oh yeah, I live here and I make this much money and uh, you probably don't, I, you know, knowingly tell them by the way, they probably just know it just by other means. But we realized that people, once they were getting keyboards, so the funny thing really happened, people started telling us, Brian, I want to tell you guys more about me. I want you to know so you can give me more relevant rewards. I was like, oh. That's really interesting because this is now desirable and it's something that people opt into. It's not something that's annoying where they're trying to do everything to prevent me from knowing about shit. It's now they want me to know, right? And so there's all these different elements, just little sort of tweaks that when people kind of tip over on that side, they realize, oh yeah, this is beneficial, blah, 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 blah. They're happy to do it, right? And when the UDID got phased out, which 
those in the mobile space will know it's the identifier for your device. It's kind of like a IMEI, IMEI uh, number, but for a smartphone device. And the idea was, um, you know, the, I, the UDID was what the ad networks were using to track people without their permission, essentially. Um, and we didn't really give a shit because we were, we, people gave us their email addresses. They're saying, well, I want a reward. I'm giving you my email address. That's way different than me just sniffing out their UDID and trying to do a bunch of sketchy stuff with their data, which we just don't do. And number seven is making people lucky. So again, a personal and company tidbit. The personal tidbit is I, I realize that everything is very, you know, what goes around comes around. But I realize that in the ecosystem of the Valley specifically, you don't keep score, keep track, but you, but you have people who basically will get voted off the island if they're just leeching, right? And uh, I realize this because you know, you'll, you'll just see some people go, oh, only in three years, right? Three years is, by the way, an eternity in Silicon Valley. It's you know, like dog years, like 21 years in dog years, right? And uh, you know, there's people who have like, disappeared. I'm like, where, where, I wonder where Joe went or whatever, you know? Like, it's because there's people who leech, and that sucks. But you know, every week I try to devote you know, two to three hours of my time to help other entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, this, this involves anything from you know, you know, being you know, a talks and you know, sharing some time with the team and just you know, bringing some ideas to light. But making people like you lucky has been always a huge passion of mine because I realize that once everybody else gets lucky around you, it all comes around. But at a, on the company level, we actually decided to do this as well. How do we let the rewards spread themselves, like pay it forward? So we did a gifting initiative where essentially you could, if you got a reward, you could share it with someone that didn't even touch that game, right? So this Best Buy thing we did, you know, you could actually send it to a friend. And we realized how cool that was because actually in the background you'll see a word cloud of the most commonly used words in the message field when people were sending these things around. And as you can see, love was the biggest one. And this is so, it was so touching that we realized that people who saw this thing was taking, taking an opportunity to, to gift it to people. Um, you'll laugh, we had a 1-800-Flowers reward and people were actually like gifting it to their girlfriends. Like, dude, that's like re-gifting. Flowers to your girlfriend, that's fucking sad. But, uh, <laughs> whatever, man. Yeah. Alright, last but not least is, I'm a luck junkie, right? I realize that you need to generate this luck. And, you know, I think it was Einstein or Edison or whatever guy once said, you don't judge a fish by how well it climbs a tree, right? And, uh, I think what I got lucky in was, you know, in Vancouver, I realized, you know, I had to, like, repeat myself 800 times to explain what the hell was going on in technology and whatever I wanted to do with my company or my idea. But in, in Silicon Valley, I would say it once and people would get it. And I think the whole idea was to find an environment, find pools of activity, and tap into things that were already doing this to create luck, right? To generate that luck. And, and eventually, it comes serendipity. It works to your favor. And, you know, I, I look at sort of the background there, and this is me skydiving for the first time, and, you know, my, uh, my DNO insurance guys were like, you should not have done that with your co-founder from the same plane. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> we survived, so I'm lucky to be alive. Uh, so thank you very much, I appreciate it.